All right, so what do we got today? Well, we got this JNet, right? And uh, you know, it was recommended to me by a friend of mine. I've had it a couple of months, been sitting in the back. Uh, I didn't really feel like doing too much this summer, it was too hot. Um, and I, I turn the AC on and it cools off, but I still, I don't like AC either, so I'm kind of screwed. Anyway, so, um, the word was that I was going to love the feeling of this stone. And, um, I was going to love the coloring on it. And I don't know if you can see it, it's got like a blush running. It's like an Eremono thing going on. And, um, got a pretty nice bottom. Got some skin, kawa, you know. Uh, it's basically rectangular. Um, got a little bit of a weirdness to it. Um, up here, I, I think this was abused. Um, see, like, I've lapped most of it out, but you see, like, this chip here. And a couple of chips there, and then there was, like, another one over there. I think it was laying around in a box that got moved a number of times, and it just kind of smacked into other stones. So there were these superficial um, fissures, right? Uh, and combined with some of these natural lines, um, these are a little bit more than your normal hairline or suji. Uh, it's, it's an inclusion, it's soft, it doesn't interfere with honing. And I kind of actually like these little character traits and stones because it kind of gives it its own little personality. Um, and we have to be careful too because sometimes you can split a stone on that uh, seam a little more easily than you could elsewhere. So uh, I sealed down here, it lapped, and I, I rolled it off on the end you know, to relieve some of the distractions. I didn't want to lap down to here and lose all of this stone because that would be a waste. And, you know, this is enough working surface for me, so I'm uh, not really worried about it. And I'm probably gonna take this chamfer here and I'm put a little bit more on it and then I'm gonna do a little bit more sealing here just to sort of maybe relieve this out a little bit and just going to wind up reinforcing the stone a little bit, take off uh, some of these super, uh, take off a little bit more of this superficial fissure in the top and um, you know, help uh, the stone last a little bit longer, well a lot longer actually. Uh, and these are the things you have to do with your Jane Atts, uh, they're natural stones. You know, they come with uh, these minor distractions sometimes and, you know, you can buy a perfect stone and uh, it could be great, you might not love it, you can find a stone that you love and it has a couple of distractions and you don't put it down because it has a little imperfection or two. Um, kind of like people, you know. Uh, you know, even your best friend, there's going to be something that they do that, you know, you're just not totally down with. And, you know, they're still your best friend. Same with the stone, all right? So, got this thing sealed up, and for right now, it's in working uh, shape for me. And like I said, I'm going to do a little bit more work here, I think, and seal it up, and a little bit more, but I, I don't need to. See, this right here, it, that's just my preventative medicine and my little OCD thing. Like, right here, right? That line, it, there's no feeling there, right? There, there's no... Yeah, let me turn the water off. Right. So there's no tick. Now, if there was a tick, like uh, you take a pin, you run it over it, and you feel like a little blip, you know, then you have something to deal with. Maybe you got to put some CA glue in there, or you know, whatever. Put some lacquer down really thin, let it get in and seal up, and then lap it down, and uh, that usually works too. Anyway, it, it's par for the course. That's what goes on. All right, now try and move some things around here because I don't want to kill the video um, with my hand in the way of everything all the time. All right, so here we go, just on water. Uh, this blade needs uh, like a little bit of a touch up and um, well, it doesn't need it. I just want to do it because I like that fresh off the stone feeling. So, you know, people ask me all the time, they're like, uh, how do you check your stones out? Well, I hone on them, you know, and uh, 
that's it so it is okay the feeling here is um, it's like satiny there's a little texture under the blade you know and um, but it's still very smooth it's there's no real sense of graininess really it's just a little bit of texture all right so that's that it just gives me a little bit of you know sensation to uh, get a little bit of an understanding all right so here I got this coma all right and uh, I'm gonna check my slurry out now you can see that all right you can see you got a little bit of base stone mixed up in there. The slurry is not pure white, but it's pretty white, you know. But I'm also getting, and well, now I'm getting some more. So now you see I got more of the base stone up into it. Now, some people will tell you that uh, this isn't really that good, that you have to have no base stone kicked up. And... <clears throat> I, you know, I don't agree. It's not a perfect world. Um, no matter what, you're always going to have some base stone kicked up because uh, the coma, right? This is abrasive, all right? So it's always going to abrade your your acido, your awasedo, awasedo. <clears throat> so it's a matter of how much is it going to do it, you know? And what is the mix of your slurry going to be? You know, any nagura is going to do that. Same with you know, you know, a tomo, right? So, um, basically what you do is, you know, you learn your stones and you learn to figure out like, you know, how much slower you need and how much base stone you're going to kick up and so on and so forth. And you're home with that. It's a matter of, you know, trial and error. I guess it's not like a recipe where everything is going to be perfect all the time. Right, this is a little pasty that I like. Let me throw a little water on here. And again, I have now the feedback is the satin from the stone, which I got to tell you, you know, the feedback on this, I was told it was going to be great. It's phenomenal. It's like orgasmic. Okay. It's fast. When I say fast in this tech, uh, context, I mean, um, I, I'm not getting this heavy pushback resistance from the stone. I'm not talking about cutting speed. All right. um, it's fast, but it, it's not skippy. You know, it's easy to control, which is really, really nice. Um, the audible is great. Can you hear it? Here, let me get closer to the mic. I mean, that, that's just, you know, to me, that's killer feedback. I'm just dipping my blade in a little thing of water over here and getting a couple of drops on. Huh? I want to keep it wet. Uh, to me, wet slurry is what it's all about. You know, um, I read, you know, on forums and people having a tough time, you know, getting, you know, refining their sharpness. And you see how that drips? Right? To me, that's good. Right? There are varying degrees of that. And, it, you know, people want to like, oh, it's like milk. Oh, it's like cream. No, it's like yogurt. Look. <clears throat> What's important is, is that you develop a thing. And you know what your consistency is that you're going to work with that works for you. And then it's important that you maintain that when you hone. What somebody else does, doesn't matter so much. Now, it matters a little bit because if this gets into being like mud, you're screwed. Okay? So, you don't want that. Because that'll kill your edge. Alright? If you make it too thin, it might take a little longer. You might need a slurry refresh. I don't know. You know, you have to figure your stone out. It's about honing. It's not about, you know, reading what people are telling you on forums. It's about 
getting offline, getting into the sink, picking up your stone, getting your blade on it and honing with it, taking notes, paying attention, making comparisons, not just taking notes by uh, the way, you know, you got to read your notes. You got to pay attention to those things. All right. You wrote them down. Notes get written down for a reason. It's like so they can be referred to later. You know, it's not just, you know, about reinforcing your memory at the onset. And it, it does do that. And that is a good thing. But, you know, got to compare. Now, these days I don't have a notebook and I just kind of go by the seat of my pants because I've been doing this a little while and I have more than a few plates under my belt. But in the beginning, I had a lot of notebooks. I had a lot of sheets. I had a lot of, you know, crib notes. And I do that with everything. When I bake bread, I got, you know, bread notes and so on and so forth. Whatever the discipline is. Um, all right, so this is just an amazing feeling stuff. It's not very hard. It's hard, okay? But it's not very hard. It's hard enough. It's more than hard enough. It'll it'll do a great job on a razor's edge. I can tell you that right now. All right. Um, I haven't used this yet. To this is the first time I'm actually finishing an edge on it. Done a couple of other prelim tests, and it's what gave me the idea to do a little video on it. Well, that and I want to test my new mic. And my audio is been one of my biggest hurdles and uh, so I got this USB mic and you know nothing really fancy but it cost a little bit and I gotta like check that out and you know what I got notes on that because it's got a gain adjustment so I got a little note about how far it is from me and positioning and what the gain setting is at and so it's just like honing. <laughs> Everything is the same. Okay, this is kind of done. All right, so that stage being finished. Rinse the blade off. Let me get a piece of paper towel. Clear the blade. Another thing, I hardly ever show this to people, but a little paper towel. There's Bounty. <clears throat> I'm sure any paper towel is going to work, but I use Bounty. So I, I put the blade in it like a, a nest, like that. And I pinch here into the hollow, and I make damn sure my fingertips are not up into the bevel. But you know the paper towel will will ride forward, right? And that will pretty much dry a blade off without causing you any problems or slicing off the tip of your fingers. Now, other people use sponges and all this other stuff, and yeah that's fine whatever this is what i do i'm not saying you got to do it this way or it's the best way or whatever but you know it's something that i do so there's that all right so that one's done let me clear i got a little bowl of water down here uh, throw that up running water kills the audio all right there's a coma I'll put that over there i'm done with that for now now i got this guy this is a um, stupid, stupid hard piece of Nakayama uh, Asahi. Probably the, it's a piece of a stone that I cut down a long time ago. Um, probably the hardest stone I've ever seen. And, you know, I love hard stones, but I got to tell you, I hope I never get into another stone that hard again, because lapping it took like two weeks to get it straight. It just was crazy. Um, what am I doing? Well... Just doing a little preliminary dressing. Like I said, this is the first time I'm out with this. I just did a little session on coma. That coma slurry uh, mixed with uh, slurry from the base stone is gonna, you know, sort of polish the top a little bit. I just want to make sure that there's no embedded particles, what have you. Um, get a little slurry. I can tell you that with this tomo, that everything that comes up off this stone, it, it, all the slurry here is going to be from the stone. There will be like virtually nothing from the tomo. All right, so there's that. Kill that. There's the water kills the audio. Now, I like to use a lot of slurry, <clears throat> but I like it to be a little thinner than um, most people make the first time they're making slurry. 
So, I don't know if you can see that. See, how it just drips off, right? That's how I want it. It's important to remember that there are two things. There's the amount of slurry and then the density of the slurry. Now, I probably covered this in another video, so someone's gonna say, like, oh, you're being redundant, but it's a question that comes up all the time, and maybe someone didn't watch the other video, so I'm gonna bring it up now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> density is thickness. So you see how it's slow is moving here? That's good. That's what I want. I want wet slurry, right? I also want a lot of it. I want like a good amount of slurry. I don't want a little tiny like, you know, line of slurry, right? And the reason for that is, you know, this is a natural stone. It's not like honing on uh, silicon carbide powder, right? In the slurry, there is a percentage of abrasive and so on and so forth. And you know, you gotta work it and you wanna hit the blade all the way across, right? And that's a pretty long blade and you wanna hit it evenly. You gotta hit it evenly, your edge is gonna suck, right? So if you have a lot of slurry and provided that it's the right density, you're, in, you know, you're ensuring that you're gonna do an even job from stem to stem, toe to heel, front to back, <laughs> whatever works for you, all right? Now, does that mean you have to hone longer? No, it just means you have to hone the right amount because if you put not enough slurry down and you finish quick, then you're not done. Now you may have an edge and you know, I read, you know, the people blow hards online. They're like, oh, yeah, I honed in 30 seconds. And yeah, great. Good for you. Uh, I'm fairly convinced that if I shave with their edges, I would be, you know, less than impressed. And I've gotten a bunch of raises in from people over the years, even some recently, you know. Um, I don't take in honing. I don't hone for other people. I hone for me. And people... Occasionally, as someone who buys stones from me will be like, you yeah, know, I got a problem, you know, this blade, whatever. I usually send them to Nelson because Nelson's like the edge doctor, you know. <clears throat> and I just don't have the time to home. But, you know, sometimes I do. And uh, I'll take a look at the edge and I'll, I'll actually I'll shave with it first. And I got to tell you, you know, I, I'm not trying to make myself out to be some... I'm honing guru because I'm not, I'm just another guy, but so many times the edge is like what I call an 8K edge and it's like a Norton 8K edge. It's, you know, to me it's like 5K, 5K plus. And I'm like, how the hell does anybody call this finished? You know, um, you know, and sometimes it's from people with like, you know, they got, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're known, you know, and you got to say, well, you know, anyone can have a bad day, including me, you know, but you get two or three blades from the same source and they all have this like half-assed approach or, you know, you get down to it and you look at the edge and you see little bits of, you know, polishing compounds <clears throat> embedded in the striations. <clears throat> you can actually pick it up sometimes with a piece of bounty. Uh, and, uh, you know, th these edges are coming from people that claim to be, you know, honing only on naturals and they're, you know, honing gods and gurus and edge snobs and all that other bullshit. Look, <clears throat> look, you know, you, you send in your edges out and you like the guy's edges, that's fine, whatever, you know. You run into a problem with an edge, you know, chances are you send it back to that person, they'll be able to take care of it for you. Maybe it is just a case of having a bad day. Maybe the stuff got mishandled and shipping. Maybe, you know, you know, yeah, some places like they job work out. Um, I, I don't know who's jobbing stuff out and I don't get into that Facebook drama, you know, bullshit about, you know, who's honing what or whatever, who's sending stuff out to somebody else to hone for them. Don't know, don't care. Right? Uh, 
I got into straights because, well, I got into straights with a caveat, and the caveat was if I couldn't hone, I wasn't going to do it. So to me, send the raises out, I don't know. You know, not my thing. I know I got raises from uh, Nelson, and they were like outstanding, you know, and uh, I shaved very well. I used to hone and uh, sell on shaving farms, but got out of that. It wasn't really what I wanted to do. Um, anyway, back to the stone. I'm like wandering off course here. This stone is amazing. It's it's starting to actually feel harder than it did before. Okay, and um, and that's going to be probably the the result of it getting a polished a little bit from back and forth X strokes that I'm doing here. A little tiny bit of slurry coming up. Let me see what happens. If I'm picking up any slurry from just the blade. No. And my strokes here are very, very light. And the blade's got too much of a smile on it to be doing that, but I can feel the the polish is where I want it. And I know the bevel and uh, the mid-range was good on this, and all I was looking to do was reestablish that, like, crispy feeling. Yeah, I'm good. All right. So, anyway, just a look at another stone, you know, and some rambling about honing and stuff that uh, I hope I'm not boring anybody when I'm doing that. But these are thoughts that go through my head when I'm honing. And, you know, people send me questions, so I know these questions and ideas and concepts or whatever are on other people's minds, too. So I figured it couldn't hurt. Anyway, remember, get out there, get honing, have fun.